Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Excuse my very um, dark Halloween-esque makeup and outfit today. Just wanted to channel my inner Halloween, I guess. I wanted to just say before we start the video though, I have absolutely awful allergies. They're not that bad at this very moment, but just a few minutes ago, um, my nose was running so bad and I could barely talk and I could barely breathe. So if you, if you get <laughs> really annoyed by that and want to click out the video, I completely understand. I do have a full mental health um, playlist on my YouTube channel. I will link that below if you're interested in checking that out. So welcome back to another mental health video. Um, like I did mention, I do a lot of mental health videos on my channel. I've done a lot of mental health videos on my channel in the past. Um, it's just something that's very passionate. I'm very passionate about mental health. So if you want to check my whole playlist out, I will link it down below. I also have a blog that is dedicated to mental health. It's just all mental health video or all mental health articles that I've written. Uh, there's not very many articles on there. I don't, you know, I'm not like, you know, I post one every once in a while. So, so if you're interested, I will link that down below. Um, that would be cool if you could go check it out. Um, anyways, so we are going to be talking about um, borderline personality disorder in connection with derealization or depersonalization. There, uh, derealization and depersonalization are very much um, very similar. They're a little different, but um, a lot of the times they do go hand in hand. Um, I also have a full video kind of explaining my experience, I guess, with borderline personality disorder. It was a couple years ago, and I've learned a lot and I've grown a lot since then, so I don't know if I should make another one um, just of kind of like what I know now. And because, you know, um, that video was... I think a year after I got diagnosed and I still didn't even really know that much about the disorder. So now I'm a lot more educated on it. So I might make another one of those. I don't know. Let me know if you want it. I'll link that video, that specific video down below as well. Um, there's going to be a whole directory in the description box. Basically just going over kind of my experience with uh, BPD and derealization in connection to the two, like they were connected. Um, my experience of derealization and stuff because it's a very weird feeling that I did not understand for a long time um, until I connected it with BPD. And um, I also want to put it out here. <laughs> There's going to be like 15 disclaimers in this video before I even get started on it. So I just, so I just kind of want to just let you guys know, uh, you know, I say this probably in another video and you probably already know, but I am not a licensed mental health professional. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. So if you guys are looking for professional help, please visit your doctor or psychiatrist or therapist. Um, yeah, just take everything I say with a grain of salt. Um, I am not medically licensed. So a little bit of a backstory. Um, I go into uh, my backstory a lot with border, uh, with my video uh, um specifically about my BPD, but I'll just tell you a little bit um, so it kind of makes more sense. So I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder when I was 19 years old. Um, after years and years of questioning what was going on with me, um, I had been dealing with depression for a very, very long time leading up to that point. Um, and so a lot, you know, a lot of other things connected with mental illness up to that point. So it was kind of a relief at first when I did get diagnosed because I'd never, up to, up to that point, I'd never really been officially diagnosed with anything. I just went to therapists and they're like, oh yeah, you're depressed. Here's some medication. So when I did get diagnosed, it was kind of a relief because I felt more part of a group. It took me a while to kind of really accept that this is what I had. After lots of research, after going to therapy and seeing a therapist that specifically specializes in BPD, um, I started to recognize things about myself that I had never recognized before and I started to really connect um, myself and my symptoms and my struggles with that of BPD. So 
third year in, <laughs> I've kind of recognized maybe I do have this disorder. I, I personally believe that I am very, very like my, my illness or my disorder is not extremely severe. Like I don't think you would really be able to tell, at least from my point of view, you wouldn't be really be able to tell that I you know, do have BPD unless I told you. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of where I am at. Sorry, my noses keep running. As far as the derealization goes, so I started experiencing derealization, um, I think, last March, so the March of this year. Um, and it's been happening on and off since then. Um, so really, I haven't really been experiencing it that long, but long enough to really like notice it and be like kind of annoyed. Um, although the, this last month of September, I really haven't had any episodes of it happening except for maybe a few very small ones. But between, I would say, between March and August, they got pretty heavy, pretty severe, pretty frequent, and it was the most annoying thing ever. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pull up the definition of delarization according to Google. This, uh, let's see, it's a recurring experience or episode of feeling detached from one's surroundings, uh, mental processes, or, or body. Feeling like you're in a dream or looking at yourself as an outside observer. That's kind of just like a general overview of it. <sighs> They're just these like little episodes that pop up um, out of, they can be f out of nowhere. Um, and it literally feels like you are in a dream. Um, nothing feels real at all. Nothing around you feels real. Like it's the most bizarre feeling. Like whenever I experience this, I feel like, again, like I am in a dream. I feel like I'm floating. Um, I don't feel real. Nothing feels real. Everything feels in slow motion. Um, and it's very, very hard for me to concentrate when I'm having an episode on one thing, sometimes my heart races. Um, it's just ex extremely hard for me to concentrate. Um, and when I do concentrate, I can only like, I hyper focus on one thing. And um, it's just, it's a very weird feeling. It feels very foggy. It's like the weirdest feeling. Um, I think the worst, the worst, episode I ever had was when I was out to dinner with my boyfriend. Um, it was pretty late at night and we were, we went, you know, downtown and we went to a pretty nice restaurant. I felt so bad. I felt like, you know, I ruined his night because this episode came on so, so, so strong. Like I could not focus on what he was saying. Um, I felt like I was floating. My heart was racing so bad. I had so much anxiety. Um, I literally could not focus on what he was saying. I was super quiet. I did not want to be around anybody. I literally just wanted to go back home and crawl into bed and just sleep. And I felt instantly very tired. I had very bad tunnel vision. It was, it was really bad. Um, it's not like, it, it's not like, I guess that was kind of dramatic because it's not like I'm impaired or anything when, I, when these are happening. Like I know what's going on around me, but it's just a weird, really, really weird, bizarre feeling. Never knew why these episodes were happening because they just started happening one day. Like there was no traumatic event that had happened to me. I didn't go through anything, you know, major or huge or there was nothing going on in my life that was like a big change or anything like that. They just started happening out of nowhere. One of my very, very best friends, Nicole, she sent me, um, I think it was an article or a picture or something. And she said, you know, I noticed this and I thought it was interesting and I thought I'd send it to you because um, I tell her, I t I've told her before about my dealerization episodes and how they're very weird and, um, and you know, she, she came across how BPD and dealerization connect to one another because when you do have BPD, if you have BPD, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. You go through extreme emotions and just debilitates me. And that's how strong these emotions are with BPD. 
it's very hard to cope um, hence you know why people with BPD tend to cut or starve or spend excessive amounts of money at one time because you're literally doing everything you can to get away from these feelings um, because it is so intense it is so hard it feels you feel very manic and you don't feel yourself so you know it's like for me it makes sense for me to do anything I can to feel okay again derealization or what I've read up on derealization that is just another way that people with BPD actually cope um because it kind of separates when you at least when I go through a derealization episode it separates me from reality like because I don't feel real I don't feel like I can't concentrate on anything. I can I can connect my derealization episodes with stressful situations um, or situations where a lot is going on. Like recently, um, at, it's been happening a lot at concerts. So if I'm at a concert, I'll usually feel like I almost kind of count on feeling a derealization episode come on because the last concerts I've gone to pretty much this whole entire year I felt derealization episodes come on just because I feel I, I the only way I can wrap my head around it is that maybe that it's there's just so much going on with a de like with concerts like yeah so that's kind of what I've learned from it in connection to BPD I have made so many coping mechanisms for myself whenever I feel very overwhelmed um I will usually act in very irrational ways or you know try to escape the situation and I think that derealization is just another way of my brain trying to protect itself um, even though you know it, it thinks that it's in danger when it's really not but then there's another question of it why does it happen because sometimes it happens to me for no reason like I remember one instance I was hanging out with two of my very very close friends like I'm very comfortable with them and all we were doing is going to the store to get stuff for dinner and I do that all the time like going to places does not stress me out whatsoever so but then I felt it so I don't want to just leave on that note um, I, I wanted to just say like if you go through derealization or depersonalization there are a couple of things that I that I have learned that do help when you're in that state of mind um, is to do something called grounding. Um, this is something that you do learn in dialectical behavioral therapy. That always is a tongue twister, um, or you know, therapy um, in BPD therapy. You know, you should go over this, but you can always look it up as well. You know, look it up on Google. Um, but basically what grounding is, is essentially you're trying to, quote, ground yourself to reality. So what I like to do if I'm experiencing an episode of derealization is I like to find one object that's near me, um, something like a chair or the, you know, a piece of fruit or something like that, like a, like a painting or something very easy, not something scary or something stressful, um, something that is in the room not moving um, and preferably like to me I don't like to pick a person I just pick an object like an inanimate object and I look at that object I examine that object what color is the object how big is the object how much do you think it weighs what does it feel like is it cold is it hot um, what does it smell like what does it taste like um, anything like that that can kind of ground you and br pull you back to your surrounding reality. Um, another way of, I haven't personally tried this, but I really do think it's going to work. So next time I do go through a dealerization episode, I, if I can, I probably will try this. Um, but it's just holding a piece of ice. Um, a, a lot of therapists recommend doing that when you feel like you want to self-harm as well because the ice does cause a little bit of pain because it's super cold obviously and it you know brings that sting that self-harmers like to feel um but the ice will kind of you know essentially bring that kind of that that pain without actually causing any damage um but it'll help you to kind of associate with reality and what's happening and um it'll help you know 
bring yourself back and be like, oh, this hurts a little bit. This stings a little. So it does help with that. So that's kind of, you know, what I've learned about dualization. I hope this video wasn't like all over the place, which I probably, I just know it is. My videos are all over the place because I'm all over the place. I hope you guys got educated by this video. I hope that you guys um, maybe learned something about yourself or somebody else in your life or, you know, just about BPD or dualization in general. Um, I really think that it's important that we educate people on mental health. You know, I know that most people do know what mental illness is, but do they really know what it is? Do they really know what it is? So I'm not trying to spread any pity for me. Um, I'm, I don't want you guys to feel bad for me in any way because everybody goes through things in their life that are hard. So I just want to let you know that you are not alone if you are going through this. Um, and feel free to share your experiences or any tips or guidance or anything that you may have down in the comments below. I always love to start a conversation, especially on my mental health videos. It's very important. And if you want to, it would be amazing if you could share this video with somebody you love or maybe on Facebook or wherever, on Instagram, wherever. But if you don't, it's cool too. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Again, if you want to visit my other mental health videos, I will have the playlist link down below as well as my mental health uh, blog too. So I hope you guys are having such an amazing day. Yeah. I love all of you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.